Welcome back to our Ford and Fordson archive series. Now throughout this series we've tried to show you the films in order to create a type of timeline on models and production. While the series has continued we've collected a few extra films along the way that would have been out of place had we included them at the time. This has now allowed us to go right back to the beginning to when these extra films were set. One of the amazing things about watching these old films is that you begin to appreciate again the country's skills that were carried out by experts all the time so that they became commonplace. A far cry from today when most of these skills have all but died out, mainly because they're not needed anymore. Our first film shows some of these old country skills. It's the story of the invention and making of the wheel and how it revolutionised life in general and the farmer's lot in particular. Here it is in Wheels of the farmer. The sense of urgency diminished and during the 20s little new development was apparent and there had certainly been no basic change in the tractor wheel. Designed primarily for traction, it was thought that this purpose would best be served by steel wheels fitted with strakes. Since these wheels undoubtedly gripped, the great wastage of engine power was accepted as necessary. Indeed, there was little difference between the wartime tractor and this 1929 model although by this time spade lugs had come into use. But steel wheels were inconvenient. They slowed down the work and in addition, every time the tractor went onto the public highway, vans had to be fitted round the lugs or strakes in order not to damage the surface of the road. There was still a great deal to be said for the horse and a large majority of English farmers had yet to be persuaded that tractors would save them both time and money. Then, in 1930, a milestone was passed. The first tractor was expressly designed for use on pneumatic rubber tyres. This was a revolution which the farmer at first was slow to see. Then followed a lot of hard work behind the scenes as tread after tread was tested and discarded. And now, some of the implements designed by British specialists for exclusive operation with the Ford's major tractor. First, a ransom steerage hole. The company's C62 bar is fitted with hoeing tines and is mounted to the Fordson three-point linkage. The operator sits on a special seat which is designed to trail behind the tool bar itself. Tiller steering is used, producing very accurate hoeing. Again from the tool bar range of ransoms, this ridger. Notice that this rear-mounted tool bar is equipped with diamond type beads. There is individual depth adjustment on all three bodies and row width adjustment can also be made easily. Also adapted to the Ransom C61 toolbar, a front mounted potato coverer. The operator has a good view of his work, resulting in the potatoes being neatly covered. The standard diamond type toolbar beams are again employed. You transport heavy implements at time-saving speeds while the tool rides safely above rocks and other obstructions. Then you have two automatic controls. First, constant graft control, which adjusts automatically to the resistance of the soil. Let's say you decide to plow at seven inches. You set for this depth with the touch control lever. The hydraulic brain converts your touch control lever setting into pounds of pull on the drawbar. Let's say 2,700 pounds in this type of soil. With the selector lever set at constant graft control position, and working in a field where the soil is uniform, even though the field is ridged or uneven, the Ford hydraulic brain will see to it that you get uniform plowing depth automatically through constant graft control. If the soil in the field is not uniform, the changes in draft may amount to several hundred pounds. When big changes like that occur, you can alter your orders to the hydraulic brain simply by moving the touch control lever up or down to maintain the plowing depth you want. So our prototypes were built. And then came the real test of all our ideas. The new tractor's performance would show just how well we'd done our work. 
Yes, she handles nicely. Light on the steering. Smooth on the clutch. Easy gear engagement. We're testing ruthlessly. The ground will be rough, but the handling a side rougher. We test each version of the tractor. The half track and full track models. The petrol, the paraffin, the diesel. <laughs> 